Do you ever feel like you're not in control of your life? That external factors such as your job, your relationships, or your circumstances dictate how you feel and what you do? If so, you're not alone. Many people live their lives from the outside in, letting the world around them shape their thoughts and actions. But according to Stephen Covey, author of The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, the most successful and fulfilled people live from the inside out. They focus on developing their character, principles, and value, and let these inner qualities guide their decisions and interactions with the world. Covey explains why it's essential to cultivate our inner selves and offers practical advice and tools for doing so. By mastering the inside-out approach, he says, we can become more effective leaders, communicators, and problem solvers and live a more purposeful and fulfilling life. After exploring the importance of living from the inside out, Stephen Covey introduces us to the seven habits that can transform our lives and help us achieve our goals. These habits are not just superficial tips or tricks, but rather deep-rooted principles that can shape the way we think, act, and relate to others. By mastering these habits, we can cultivate a strong sense of character, improve our relationships, and achieve both personal and professional success. In the upcoming chapters, we'll explore each habit in detail and learn how to integrate them into our daily lives. Get ready to embark on a journey of self-discovery and growth as we explore the seven habits of highly effective people. Habit number one, be proactive. Being proactive means understanding that you are in control of your own choices and actions, and that you have the power to choose how you respond to any situation. This requires developing a proactive mindset, where you focus on what you can control and influence, rather than worrying about things outside of your control. Covey also highlights the importance of understanding the difference between proactive language and reactive language. Proactive language involves using I can, I will, and I choose to, while reactive language involves using phrases as I have to, I can't, and I must. By being proactive, individuals can take charge of their lives and create the outcomes they desire, rather than being victims of circumstances. This habit sets the foundation for the other six habits, which build on the principle of proactivity. Imagine two people who are stuck in traffic on their way to an important meeting. One person starts to panic, complaining about how unlucky they are to be stuck in traffic and how they're going to miss the meeting. They feel powerless and frustrated, blaming the traffic and external circumstances for their situation. This person is exhibiting a reactive mindset. The other person, however, takes a different approach. They recognize that they can't control the traffic, but they can control how they respond to the situation. They take a deep breath and start to think of alternative routes or ways to make up for lost time. They decide to call ahead to the meeting and let them know they'll be late and perhaps suggest a later start time. This person is exhibiting a proactive mindset. Despite both being stuck in the same traffic, the person with a proactive mindset takes control of the situation and finds a solution rather than being a victim of circumstances. This simple anecdote illustrates how the be proactive habit can help individuals take control of their lives and respond to situations in a positive and productive way. Habit number two, begin with the end in mind. Covey suggests that before beginning any task or project, individuals should take the time to define what success looks like and visualize the end result they want to achieve. This involves thinking about their values, principles, and what they want to be remembered for. Once individuals have a clear understanding of their desired end result, they can work backwards to identify the steps needed to achieve it. This approach helps to align their actions with their long-term goals and ensures that they are not simply reacting to immediate demands and distractions. In order to be effective, Covey suggests that individuals should also create a personal mission statement which outlines their overall purpose and values. This statement can serve as a guide for decision-making and goal-setting and help individuals stay focused on what is truly important to them. By beginning with the end in mind, individuals can create a clear roadmap for their lives and work towards their goals with intention and purpose. This habit sets the foundation for the third habit, put first things first, which is about prioritizing and focusing on what matters most in order to achieve the desired end result. Imagine you're a project manager who has been tasked with leading a team to complete a complex project. To ensure its success, you could simply dive into the project without a plan, hoping to reach the end goal eventually. 
However, by beginning with the end in mind, you can set your team up for success from the start. You would begin by defining the end goal of the project, such as delivering a new software application by a certain deadline. You would then break the project down into smaller, more manageable tasks and milestones, each with its own timeline. This approach will help you to identify potential obstacles and roadblocks and ensure that you have adequate resources and time allocated to overcome them. Next, you would work with your team to establish clear roles and responsibilities, ensuring that everyone understands what they need to do to contribute to the project's success. You would communicate your vision and goals for the project, creating a shared sense of purpose and motivation. By beginning with the end in mind and creating a clear plan of action, you'll be able to lead your team effectively and ensure that everyone is working towards the same end goal. This will help you to keep the project on track and minimize the risk of delays or setbacks. Ultimately, this approach can help you to deliver a successful project on time and within budget. Habit number three, put first things first. This habit is all about prioritization and time management. Highly effective people focus their time and energy on what matters most, and they organize their lives around their most important life goals and values. To put first things first, you must first identify your highest priorities, values, and goals in life. Then, you must organize your time and energy around those priorities. This involves setting clear goals, creating a plan of action, and scheduling your time effectively to ensure that you're spending your time on what matters most. This habit also involves learning to say no to less important tasks and distractions and delegating tasks to others when possible. It's about being proactive and taking control of your time rather than letting others dictate how you spend it. As a busy, working parent, you might feel like you're constantly juggling a never-ending list of tasks and responsibilities, but by putting first things first, you can prioritize your time and focus on what really matters. Start by identifying the most important tasks that need to be done each day. These might include getting your children ready for school, completing important work tasks, and making time for self-care activities like exercise or meditation. Once you've identified those tasks, work on them first and give them your full attention and effort. Next, look for opportunities to delegate or outsource tasks that are less important or that can be done by someone else. For example, you might hire a house cleaner or ask your partner to take on some of the household chores. By delegating tasks, you can free up more time and energy to focus on the things that matter most. Finally, learn to say no to activities and commitments that don't align with your priorities. For example, if you're asked to join a committee or attend a social event that doesn't fit with your schedule or values, politely decline and explain that you need to focus on your own priorities. By putting first things first and prioritizing your time and energy, you can feel more in control of your life and achieve a better balance between work, family, and yourself. Habit number four, think win-win. To think win-win means to approach every interaction with the mindset that there are enough resources and opportunities for everyone and to look for ways to create mutually beneficial outcomes. This habit is especially important in business and personal relationships where conflict can arise when people are only focused on their own interests. By seeking win-win solutions, you can build stronger, more collaborative relationships that benefit everyone involved. Thinking win-win requires a high level of emotional intelligence and empathy as it involves putting yourself in the other person's shoes and understanding their needs and desires. It also involves being open-minded and creative in finding solutions that meet both parties' goals. Overall, the Think Win-Win habit is about creating a positive, collaborative mindset that helps you build strong, productive relationships and find success in all areas of your life. Karen and her co-workers had been assigned to work on a team project with a tight deadline. They were all given specific tasks to complete and were expected to collaborate to get the project done on time. As they began working on the project, Karen noticed that one of her coworkers, Jim, seemed to be struggling with his tasks. He was falling behind schedule and his work was not up to par. Karen realized that if Jim didn't catch up, it could put the entire team behind schedule and jeopardize the success of the project. Rather than getting frustrated or blaming Jim for his struggles, Karen decided to apply the think-win-win habit. She approached Jim and offered to help him with his tasks, explaining that she wanted to ensure the success of the project and that they could both benefit from working together. 
Jim was initially hesitant to accept Karen's offer, feeling embarrassed about his struggles. However, Karen reassured him that they were all working towards a common goal and that they could all succeed together. With Karen's help and support, Jim was able to catch up with his tasks and contribute to the success of the project. Karen was also able to complete her own tasks more efficiently as she had gained a better understanding of Jim's role and how it fit into the project as a whole. This experience taught Karen that by thinking win-win and focusing on the success of the project as a whole, she was able to overcome obstacles and achieve a better outcome than if she had only focused on her own tasks. She also realized that by offering support and collaboration to her coworkers, she could build stronger relationships and work more effectively as a team. Habit number five, seek first to understand, then to be understood. The fifth habit emphasizes the importance of active listening and empathy in communication. According to Stephen Covey, many people are quick to speak and slow to listen, which can lead to misunderstandings and ineffective communication. Instead, effective communicators should seek to understand the other person's perspective before trying to make themselves understood. This habit involves a three-step process. Listen empathetically, diagnose, and then respond. Empathetic listening means listening to the other person with the intent to understand their thoughts, feelings, and perspectives. This requires setting aside one's own biases and assumptions and truly trying to see the situation from the other person's point of view. Diagnosing involves interpreting what the other person is saying and reflecting it back to them to ensure that you have understood them correctly. Finally, Responding means using the information gathered from empathetic listening and diagnosing to craft an appropriate and effective response. By following this habit, individuals can improve their communication skills, build better relationships, and solve problems more effectively. It allows people to avoid misunderstandings, build trust, and find common ground. This habit is particularly useful in situations where there may be disagreement or conflict, as it can help individuals to find mutually beneficial solutions and avoid unnecessary arguments. Overall, seeking first to understand, then to be understood, is a powerful tool for improving communication and achieving success in both personal and professional relationships. John had been having a lot of arguments with his wife lately. They both seemed to be talking past each other and not really understanding what the other was saying. John would try to explain his point of view, but his wife would interrupt him and tell him why he was wrong. It seemed like they were always at odds. One day, John remembered the fifth habit of seeking first to understand, then to be understood. Instead of trying to make his own point, he decided to try a different approach. He asked his wife to explain her point of view and listened carefully as she spoke. When she was finished, he repeated back to her what he had heard to make sure he understood her correctly. To his surprise, his wife was much more open to hearing his point of view after he had shown that he understood hers. They were able to have a more productive conversation and come to a resolution that satisfied both of them. This anecdote shows how the fifth habit can be applied in personal relationships as well as in the workplace. By taking the time to listen and understand the other person's perspective, we can build stronger relationships and find more effective solutions to problems. Habit number six, synergize. The sixth habit is all about the power of collaboration and teamwork. According to the author, when people work together, they can achieve results that are greater than what each individual can achieve alone. Synergy is about finding creative solutions that benefit everyone involved rather than just compromising. To achieve synergy, people must be open-minded, willing to listen to others, and have good communication skills. They must also build trust and respect with others to create a positive working environment. Synergy can be applied in personal and professional relationships to achieve mutual benefits and positive outcomes. John is a busy father who struggles to balance his career and personal life. He often works long hours at the office and feels like he doesn't have enough time to spend with his family. One day, John realizes that he needs to make a change and decides to start practicing the sixth habit, synergy. He begins by seeking out opportunities to collaborate with his colleagues and finding ways to improve processes and workflows at his job. As he works with his team to solve problems, he starts to see the benefits of synergy in action. By combining his strengths and skills with those of his coworkers, they're able to achieve better results and increase efficiency. 
But John also realizes that synergy doesn't just apply to his work life. It's something he can apply to his personal life as well. He starts to look for ways to collaborate and communicate more effectively with his family. By involving his wife and children in decision-making and problem-solving, they're able to achieve greater harmony and happiness at home. As John continues to practice the sixth habit, he sees how it connects with the other habits he's learned. Synergy requires him to be proactive in seeking out opportunities to collaborate with others, habit one, to listen empathetically and seek to understand others' perspectives, habit five, and to continuously improve and learn from his experiences, habit seven. By practicing all of these habits together, John is able to achieve greater effectiveness in all areas of his life. Habit number seven, sharpen the saw. The seventh habit means to prioritize self-renewal and continuous self-improvement, both physically and mentally. This habit is based on the idea that in order to be highly effective in our lives, we need to take care of ourselves first. We must balance and renew our physical, spiritual, mental, and emotional needs regularly to remain effective and productive. Sharpening the saw involves taking care of our physical health by exercising regularly, eating well, and getting enough rest. It also involves nurturing our emotional and mental health by practicing self-care, learning new things, and taking time for reflection and relaxation. Finally, it involves developing our spiritual side by exploring our values, beliefs, and purpose. This habit is important because it allows us to maintain the energy, focus, and motivation needed to achieve our goals and live a fulfilling life. When we neglect self-care and self-renewal, we become less effective, less productive, and more prone to burnout. By sharpening the saw, we not only improve our own lives, but also become better equipped to help others and make a positive impact in the world. It is the foundation for all other habits as it enables us to continue practicing them and maintain our progress towards becoming highly effective individuals. One way to apply this habit is to set aside regular time for personal growth and development. For example, a person might choose to spend an hour each day reading a book on a topic they want to learn more about, attending a weekly yoga class to improve their physical health, or meeting with a therapist to work on their emotional well-being. One person who exemplified this habit was Benjamin Franklin, one of the founding fathers of the United States. Franklin was known for his lifelong commitment to learning and personal development. He set aside time each day to read and reflect, and he also pursued a variety of interests outside of his primary work as a printer and a statesman. He experimented with electricity, created his own version of the phonetic alphabet, and invented the Franklin stove, among other accomplishments. Franklin's example demonstrates the importance of continual learning and growth in all areas of life. By staying curious and open to new experiences, we can continue to improve ourselves and make meaningful contributions to the world around us. Thanks for tuning in to our summary of the seven habits of highly effective people. As we've seen, the most successful and fulfilled people live from the inside out, focusing on developing their character, principles, and values, and letting these inner qualities guide their decisions and interactions with the world. As we wrap up, I want to encourage you to take the principles we've discussed to heart and apply them to your own life. Take time to reflect on your values, your mission, and your goals, and let these guide your actions and decisions. Remember that true success and fulfillment come from within, and that by cultivating your inner self, you can achieve great things in all areas of your life. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. And don't hesitate to share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. Thanks again for watching. See you soon.